Okay, we're recording. I'm gonna put it on. So, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us for Hustle and Heart. For those of you, because there's a lot of you, that this is actually your first ever Hustle and Heart, I just kind of want to explain to you a little bit about um, just the concept of Hustle and Heart. So, Hustle and Heart is something that was kind of on my mind towards the end of last year. Something that I wanted to establish for our Consultants that were wanting to grow up this career plan consultants who understood the opportunity that lie in front of us and wanted to seize that opportunity and um, We have our live Thursday trainings which happen every other Thursday in our group page and that's really designed for all consultants so Speaking to you guys our leaders in our team. I want you to kind of understand the difference between the two so I want to encourage you to encourage your team members to always join the live Thursdays if they can, or at least watch the playback because those truly are designed for all consultants, whether they are people that, you know, are a total hobbyist and really only want to get a discount for themselves or whether they want to, you know, grow a career. Like for example, this coming Thursday, we're going to be talking about uh, transition month and what to expect and how to prepare and how to have a successful transition month. So that's something that truly everyone can benefit from watching. And so these are going to be very different. These are going to be um, a lot more in-depth meat, meat and potato type trainings, um, the things that I really, really love to talk about. So the date for this will change every single month because some months I'm working with other leaders to do them. Some months it's just me. Um, so it's going to change, but I promise that I will give you at least a couple weeks notice to plan ahead for your calendar. All right, so tonight on this edition of Hustle and Heart, we're gonna talk about leadership. And uh, specifically, John Maxwell's leadership. Um, the, he is someone who inspires me greatly. We actually had the pleasure of having him come and train at one of our reunions one year. And ever since then, I have really been implementing trying to implement his teachings. I've also read his book, um, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, and that's a fantastic read if you want to really develop your uh, skills as a leader. Specifically speaking about myself, when I first joined Sensi, uh, if you've heard my story, you know I did not want to grow a team. I did not want the, um, I don't know, I guess at that time I kind of thought of it as like pressure. Didn't want that pressure of people relying on me, counting on me. I just felt like I wasn't good enough. And I still, to this day, struggle with feeling not good enough to be a leader. And it's something that I have to remind myself, hey, I'm, this is never, I'm never going to get at the finish line. I'm always going to continue improving and, and trying to be the best leader that I can be. And that has to be good enough for me, right? It's got to be good enough for me. It's got to be good enough for you. And um, knowing that you as a leader, there's never like an, there's not like an end game, right? Like we're always a work in progress. So don't beat yourself up like I've done. And instead, um, position yourself to learn and grow and always be um, developing your leadership skills and your leadership abilities. Uh, so if you have never read The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, it's a fantastic read if you're looking for something um, to add to your nightstand right now. Uh, and so I want to start off by asking you, what does leadership mean to you? Like, and I'd be curious to hear, like if someone, if a couple of you want to unmute and share, um, I would be super curious to hear what your thoughts of what leadership means. Like what's leadership to you? The Ray Dunn boss mug, duh. <laughs> Anybody want to share? I can share. Um, oh. For me, um, leadership means a lot of things. Um, one thing that I've learned is that um, as a leader, most of the time, um, your needs come last. <laughs> um, it's all about your team. It's all about creating and developing and um, making your teammates better at all times and, um, you know, just always focusing on the betterment of them, getting them better each and every day and to just train and guide and um, show them the possibilities um, 
of what, you know, Sensi leadership can do for them. So, I mean, there's so many different definition, definitions of leadership, but when I think of leadership um, in the Sensi world, I think about mentoring and I think about coaching and training and just really sharing that opportunity um, of all the great things that Sensi has to offer. That's fantastic. I love it. Very well said. Thank you for sharing that, Chelsea. And if you don't know who Chelsea Gordon is, she's one of our directors in our Sensi superstars family of teams so thanks for sharing that Chelsea yeah no problem okay so um, John C Maxwell describes leadership as the ability to influence others and that really is truly a condensed version of what Chelsea just said so um, it was very very well said it truly is the ability to influence others so I want you to think about that definition of leadership and ask yourself, where do I feel right now about my own abilities to influence others? You know, like, let's say if you were to um, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 saying, Hey, um, 10 being, I am frequently thinking about influencing others and the way that I can impact them or um, one being, Never, right? Like, so just kind of think about yourself and where you feel you stand and even just your thought process of influencing others. Not necessarily the consistent actions of doing it, but where's your thought process at on it? Is it something that you think about daily, weekly, monthly, um, regarding your Cincy team, your full-time job out of Cincy, your family, right? Like, there's so many different ways um, that leadership comes into play in our lives. So I truly believe that one of the reasons Sensi has been so incredibly successful is because of the leadership that we have. And I know that y'all would agree that Heidi and Orville are some of the most just respectable leaders I've ever known. And they do an excellent job of, um, influencing others and they really truly inspire me as I'm sure they inspire all of you and so I really truly like I really truly believe that outstanding success has really been the key to Sensi's success so what we're going to talk about are the five levels of leadership and these are levels that we want to um, climb up and climb through these are levels that we as we are growing up this career plan with Sensi, these are levels of leadership that we want to um, evolve through. All right, so the first level is called the position level. So what is the position level? In the position level, people follow you because it's more of a have to. It's more of a, well, she's my sponsor and she's giving me advice and nobody else is really giving me this advice. I kind of have to have to follow her advice, right? Like that's kind of how I would relate that specifically to Sensi. Um, it's really just the position level. You're their sponsor. You kind of have to be their go-to. People at this level where people are only following you because they have to, they're really going to be giving minimal effort. So maybe you're sitting here listening right now to this training and you're thinking, Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm a lead consultant and I have a team of one or two and I really feel like none of them are giving much effort. There's a lot of things that go into play with that. But I full heartedly believe this is the biggest thing that impacts that. The great thing about the position level, level one, the first level of leadership, is that this is where we all pretty much start, right? Like, but it's not where we, we are designed to stay and it's not where we have to stay. And growing beyond that first level, the position level, is very simple. And how do you do that? Exactly what you're doing right now. You grow yourself. If you grow yourself, you will grow your business. You have got to learn to be the best leader you can be to then pour that into your team. If your cup is empty, like if your cup is empty, you will have nothing to pour out to anyone else. Nothing. So it's very important that you understand this position level. You might be listening to this right now and think, dang, that's where I am. This sucks. That's okay. That's where we all start. And you don't got to stay there. 
just by doing what you're doing right now, listening live to this or listening to the recording, you are growing yourself, which is going to grow your business. So uh, let's talk about level two, which is the permission level. The permission level is where people follow you because they want to. They're starting to see that you're not just a sensey boss, if you will. Have you ever had a team member come to you and say something like, oh, I'm so sorry, you're probably so disappointed in me, I'm not active yet this month, or have you ever had a team member say something like that to you before? And it puts you in this awkward spot where you're like, wait, no, I'm not your boss, like, no, like, they, they don't want to disappoint you. They don't wanna, most team members don't wanna feel like they're a disappointment to you. And if they only see you as their Sensi sponsor and the only thing you ever communicate with them about is Sensi and numbers, that's how they're going to feel. You're going to get a lot of those kinds of responses. Um, relationship building is key for growing beyond that first level, for growing beyond that position level. We want, we need to not only provide them support in their Sensi journey, but also have a, a friendship there as well. Now, I'm not saying that you need to spend an hour on the phone each week with every team member getting to know them and you know the ins and outs of their life. But what I'm saying is you have been blessed with the opportunity to lead these people. And it truly is an honor. Speaking specifically for me, I remember when I first started building my team, I prayed for, I prayed every day, truly, and I still pray every day for my team. I would pray every single day for the people that God would bring into my life through my business, that I may positively impact their lives, that um, I may just help them overcome things in life that have kind of brought them down. That was a big thing for me, and it still is because of my own past and, you know, feeling like crap because I didn't go to college and, you know, like I was less than or, you know, feeling like crap because I was just a serial job hopper and, and had no career ever, you know. Um, I was super insecure um, regarding the career world. And so one of my huge driving forces in working with team members is helping them to see their own potential and that they are worth so much more than some of the crap from their past. Right. So you're not going to be able to do things like that and empower people and help people. If you're only on that surface level of not knowing them at all and only seeing them as a number and only seeing them as, you know, Oh, I got another active one this month, right? Like they are much more than that. And we're blessed to, have them. So um, making friends with our team members is, is really simple. It's just like any other friendship in life, right? It's paying attention to what's going on in their world. You know, when you see, especially as your teams are young, follow them on Facebook so you get notifications when they post, you know, and make sure that a couple times a week you comment on their stuff, you know, so you know what's going on in their lives. When you see something wonderful happen, celebrate it with them, you know, send them a message. When you see something bad is happening, support them. You know, it's really that simple, just being sweet, just listening. Um, so you'll see here in this second level that you're beginning to, to form bonds and relationships with your team members. And when that is happening, you will find as a direct result that energy increases because it is a proven fact that people have more energy to do their work when they like you. Relationships are encouraged and fueled by people liking you. Relationships are the foundation. And this is one of the things that he said repeatedly, that relationships are the foundation for good leadership. Now, when you think about a house, right? Like, 
a house that's built on sand or a house that's built on stone. So if you are trying to build a sensi business without that foundation of good leadership, that relationship foundation, you will have a house built on sand and your business is not going to be solid and you will not get it off the ground. But if you build your house, AKA your business on the solid foundation of relationships, you will be able to build a long-term sustainable, steady business. And he said something that um, really spoke to me, which was people won't go along with you unless they get along with you. People won't go along with you unless they get along with you. And really, truly, to build any relationship, whether you are building a relationship with a friend outside of Sensi, a friend in Sensi, um, your spouse, one of the things that's most important is that we talk less than we listen. To be a great leader, to build relationships, we've got to listen. Oh, hang on. I think somebody might be unmuted. Let me see. <coughs> there we go. Got it. Okay. All right. So listening is more important than anything when it comes to developing these relationships, right? It's, we're not talking relationships where you're talking at people. We're talking relationships where you're getting to know people, understand people. Um, leaders listen, they learn, and then they lead. Right? Listen, learn, and lead. And uh, let's see what else I want to share with you. And let me ask you about Heidi and Orville. Would you say that Heidi and Orville have a heart for us? Would you say that you feel the love from Heidi and Orville for us? Absolutely. So now think about that for you and your team. Does your team, whether it's one person or two people, or whether your team is not yet built, that's okay too. Like this is all going to help you with your future team, right? So um, does your team know that you have a heart for them? Do you serve your team? So all the stuff that Chelsea was talking about, right? All right, so now let's talk about level three, which is the production level. This is where we're really starting to see results. People are following you. People are implementing what you're doing because of what you've done for the organization. People see the impact, the direct impact in their lives and in their businesses and just in the team as a whole because of what you've been pouring in. And they see that direct correlation between you and the success of maybe themselves or even others. So at this stage, the production level, level three, is when that you'll find that you're starting to produce, you're getting more credibility with your team, which doesn't happen overnight. You might be listening to this and thinking, well, no one cares about what I have to say. Nobody respects my advice. Nobody get, comes to my meetings. Y'all, there are still plenty of meetings where no one comes to mine. So don't ever let that discourage you because that will never change. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> it will never change. Um, but consistency is key and it takes time to build that level of respect so please don't think that because it's taking you longer than maybe someone else that you've seen develop respect faster or you know maybe you think it's done faster um, please don't get down on yourself I want you to understand that building credibility building respect does take time okay so um, see, we're on level three and we're just now starting to talk about credibility, right? So obviously it's going to take time. Um, and people are, are watching you, right? Not only your, your team, but your customers, your friends. At this level, at this production level, that's when people are going to really want to follow you because they see your success. They see, oh, she's posting, you know, oh, she earned another trip and oh, look, you know, she got this award in the mail from her upline and like people are seeing your success and it's creating momentum for you. It's creating this credibility for you. Good leaders create momentum and then they have the sense enough to maintain that momentum and not stop 
and then try to push it again and make more momentum and then stop and then try to push it again and make more momentum. That is the most exhausting way to try to lead a team or run your business. And I have seen so many people do it and it breaks my heart because I know that they are burning themselves out this way. It is so much easier to find a way that works for your schedule to consistently maintain your business and maintain that momentum. The worst thing you can do is stop and start, stop and start, stop and start. You will burn yourself out that way. Okay, so at some other things about level three. At level three, you attract better and more successful leaders at this level. This is a critical turning point for your business. Many of you might have a team of two, three, four, five right now, and you look at your team and you think to yourself, I have nothing but hobbyists. This is so frustrating. Where are my business people at? Do not give up before you get to level three. You see this groundwork that you have to lay, this momentum that you have to create, <clears throat> this respect that you have to create, right? It will come. I promise you they will come. Because remember, we don't attract what we want. We don't attract what we want. We attract who we are. What we put out there is what we are going to attract. You need to think about that every single day with what you post on social media, with how you carry yourself out in public, <clears throat> especially if you're branded, right? Like you are going to attract who, we, who you are, not what you want. It's really, it's, it's simple as that. It's the law of magnetism. So what are you putting out there? <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about level four. This is the, let's see, there's five, hold on, check back to my notes. Okay, so here in level four, we're talking about people development. This is the reproduction stage of your business. Hold on, let me get this to go away. I swear, every time I turn on my computer, I have an update. It's like, go away. All right, so in this level, this is the reproduction level. People follow you because of what you've done for them. People are seeing the relationship that you've got with them. People are seeing the results that have come from your coaching and they have that solid relationship with you. Do you think that these people are ever going to want to leave your team? Nope. Nope. They are those kinds of people that are seeing results from their work that is a direct correlation to the coaching that you've been helping them and, and directing them to, and they have a relationship with you, a, a bond with you. Do you think those people are ever going to want to cancel? No. That's what we talk about when we talk about a sticky a sticky environment, right? Like you need to create that sticky environment, a place where people get there, they feel warm and fuzzy, and they never want to leave that environment. Okay, so uh, people follow because of what you've done for them. At this stage, the energy is greatly increased. You have a great sense of loyalty. You're developing your people as leaders. This is the stage where you're starting to see duplication, multiplication. The people that you have brought in, are bringing in others, and they're becoming leaders themselves. This is when, at level four, all the compounding really, truly begins. So you raise your level of leadership, you raise your level of better people. So like I've said before, all of you who are relating to that story of, I've got a, a, a team of a few people, or a team of 10 people, and a two, team of two people, and they're just hobbyists. Raise your level of leadership, raise your level of people. Recruiting is more essential to your success than anything else. When he told me that, I never, ever, ever let that go. Ever. And I have still carried it with me to this day. Someone gave me, going along with this, someone gave me the great advice that if I wanted to be a six-figure-a-year earner with Sensi, I needed to have several things, right? 
Um, one of the things that I was taught to have was at least a hundred frontline. And you might hear that and think that's insane. I could never have a hundred frontline. I thought the same. I thought it was insane. At the time I had a frontline of about 40 and I thought oh, that's insane. I could never have a frontline of a hundred. Do you know right now over the last what, two years I've maintained between 110 and 130 frontline. I'm not a magician, right? Like I'm not, I'm not, it's not that I'm lucky. It's not that I, um, you know, knew people or something like, right. I just consistently share this business opportunity. And I'm not saying that you have to have a frontline of a hundred, but I'm saying if that's part of your big picture goal, you want to make six figures with your Sensi business, that should be one of your, um, one of your goals. One of the things you're working towards, if that is a, a goal for you, a large goal for you. Uh, but the more people you bring into this business, the more people you share this, let me say this, the more people you share this opportunity with, the more people you're going to have say yes to you. So <clears throat> if you have a goal of having 50 people in your team before the end of 2018, and you have a team of 10 right now, you can see how important it is that you share this business opportunity every single month. So if you want to sponsor two people a month, how many conversations do you need to have? 10, 20, planting the seed for this business opportunity is seriously so simple. And we have to disconnect ourselves from the outcome. That is why we stop asking. We stop asking people to join our teams because we are so worried they're going to say no. And we're going to feel like crap because they say no, that we just don't ask. Or we assume that they're not going to want our opportunity. Those are the two biggest reasons why people don't ask. I know it. I've been there. But what I'm going to tell you is no matter what you do, you can never control the, the answer. You will never be able to control that person's reply to you. All you can control is your own efforts. And if you want more, you have to give more. You have to ask more. And you have to get over obsessing over the outcome. Offer and let the outcome be the outcome. But if you don't ask, you're not getting them anyway, right? And what is literally the worst case scenario of getting a no? Nothing. You're not getting punched in the face, right? Like, I mean, come on, it's just a no. I can't tell you how many no's I've gotten over the years. I just don't care. I just don't care because what I'm working towards is so much more important. So much. I have a, a check right here on my cork board and I, I encourage y'all to do this as well. On our team page in the files section, there are some images of some blank Sensi checks. I always write out a goal check, like my next big goal paycheck that I want to make in one month. And I put that on my board until I make it. I won't give up until I make it, right? I have a, it says $17,000. For one month. That's my goal. I want to have a $17,000 month. That's not a joke. That's not, that's real life. That absolutely can happen. Absolutely. And it will stay on my corkboard until I do it. And I want to challenge you to do the same, but let's say your, your goal paycheck is a thousand dollars. You ain't going to get that without building the team. You ain't going to get that with a, without some no's, without some rejection. So either Obsess over the nose or obsess over the, the process and obsess over getting to that thousand dollar check that you want to get to. Because either the worry of rejection is going to keep you from that check or just letting the nose go is going to get you to that check. The, really, the choice is yours. Um, but John Maxwell says recruiting is key to your success. Anyone who has built a great business it will tell you that recruiting is key to your success. And I will say 100% I agree. All right, so um, as we're finishing up talking about level four, um, I want you to ask yourself, do you know what you're looking for? I want you to think for a minute, if you have a notepad handy, I want you to think for a minute, what are you looking for? What are the things that come to mind when you think of someone who is an excellent Sensi consultant? 
if you're you are if you're proud of yourself right write down some of your qualities dang i mean or, or think about someone that you respect in the business and write down some of their qualities what are you looking for what makes someone a dream team member what does it look like to you and i want you to jot some of those things down because i think for some of us we're afraid to pursue excellence we want a team full of excellent people, right? We want a team full of go-getters, but are we going after the go-getters? Or are we just settling for the easy recruits? Are we settling for the hostess flipping? Are we settling for the customer who's like buying $100 every month and you're like, girl, you know, you should probably just join. That's an easy recruit. We should all be recruiting those people. Are you settling for only those kinds of recruits or are you pursuing these people that you want, that who have the qualities that you know would make them successful? To recruit successfully, you need a picture of what, of who you're looking for. Don't let the opportunity pass you by because you just didn't think about it. You just didn't realize what you wanted, who you wanted, what you were looking for. Um, and then when you get those recruits, you've got to position them for success. And uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Um, Sensi has made it so easy for us with the new programs that they have in place, the Sensational Start program. Um, I also have a step-by-step -step checklist to help you train your new team members, um, including YouTube videos to help with that process that's in our files section in our team page. You have limitless tools to help those teams new team members that you get find success. And if someone gets a taste of success early on, it is much more likely that they are going to stick with this business. Most people decide whether they're gonna stay or go within their first 90 days. That's it, it's that fast. People usually make the decision as to if they're gonna stay or go. So it is absolutely critical that we help those team members taste success early on and show them what they're capable of and what they're, what's possible. A lot of people are so, when they join, they are so uneducated about what's possible. And so how can they dream? How can they set goals when they don't even really know what's possible for them? And that's why when they're brand new, we have to show them show them what's possible, show them what they're capable of. So they get, they get that taste of it and they don't ever want to live without that paycheck, right? They don't ever want to live out, live without that 300 bucks they made their first month or that 400 bucks, whatever it is they made, right? Set it, set their start of their business high so that they don't ever want to drop below that. Our ability to equip people for this kind of success when they're getting started is key. And really the equipping process is easy. It boils down to what, four steps, five steps. All right, so here's how we equip people. I do it, right? Like we gotta be doing it ourselves. You can't be like, okay, we're gonna launch your business, we're gonna do a party, and you don't ever do parties. No, we have to do it. We have to be able to do it ourselves before we're showing other people how to do it. Right? So step one is I do it. We do it, y'all. Step two, I do it and you do it with me. If it's a local consultant, even easier, right? Bring her along with you. If it's not a local consultant, all you got to do is talk to her on the phone and say, hey, here's how I do it. Let's have you do it too. If that doesn't click with you, here's a couple other ways you can do it, right? So two is I do it, you do it with me. Three is you do it, I'm with you, right? If she's local, go to her launch party and help her with her launch party. If he is not local, coach him through the process. Call him during his launch party or Skype in real quick during his launch party and check in on him and see how he's doing, right? You do it and I'm with you. I got your back, boo. You're not alone. Nobody wants to start this business and be alone, y'all. They don't, they're not joining network marketing so they're all alone. We've got to do it with them. Step four of the equipping process, the five steps to get them equipped, is they do it. They gotta do it. So they've walked, they've learned, they can do it, they can fly on their own. And then step five is they do it and they have someone with them. 
you've got to teach everyone that they need to learn and teach others. Even if someone comes into this business and they don't think that they want to sponsor, they don't think that they want to build a team, that does not mean that they won't. Look at me, right? And showing them how rewarding it is, not only financially, but relationally, is important to helping them make that decision to build their team. And when you start to have someone taste financial success right off the bat as they're launching their business, like I said, they're going to be willing to dream bigger. And how we know that with this type of business, if you want to make $1,000 a month, there's a couple ways to do it, right? There's the smart way, there's the hard way. So if we're truly teaching our team members how to work smart versus working hard, Work, hard, work smarter, not harder, right? If we're truly teaching them the difference between those two, they're going to see that it is so much more um, beneficial to their time, um, much more um, return on investment, if you will, for time spent in a month when they have a team versus doing it all themselves. So, um, all right, so though, that's how we're going to equip our team members to be successful. So now we're going to talk about level five, which is the fifth level of leadership, the very last level of leadership. And this is the pinnacle level. This is the level that we all strive to be at. This is the level where you have your team's ultimate respect. This is the level where people follow you because of who you are and what you've done or what you represent. At this level, the pinnacle level, this is when you are seeing your vision um, come to life. This is when you're seeing um, what you've always envisioned your team looking like, representing, coming to fruition. And this is the level that we all strive to reach. So to me, I feel like more than anything, when I listened to this training, it taught me that it's this really is a journey. Um, this is not going to be a sprint. I'm not. I'm not going to be a play. I'm not going to be in a place of respect where I'm um, helping leaders develop their own businesses overnight. Right? Like I remember when I heard this training. What year was it? Let's see if I wrote the year. Dang it, I didn't write the year down. Actually, oh my gosh, this was my first reunion, y'all. This was uh, Fort Worth, Stampede. Oh my goodness, that was a long time ago. So that was um, 2011. August of 2011 was the first time I heard this. And now, fast forward to where we are today. Um, I feel like now we're really at like level four, truthfully. I feel like that's where we are as a, as a group. And um, it's a journey, right? Like I didn't go from 2011 to bam, the next year, 2012. I had climbed all those levels of leadership and I was golden. No, it's a journey. It's a process. It is not going to be a sprint. You are not going to get there overnight. You're not going to build respect overnight. You're not going to build a team of leaders overnight, but you will through your consistency. And by doing things like this, like you're doing right now, learning how to be a better leader, learning how to serve your team. So if you want high commitment from your team, you want a team that has high energy and commitment to their business, you have to connect with them relationally. That really is what it all boils down to. Relationships are going to strengthen um, your bonds, which is going to strengthen their commitments to their business and their really commitment to themselves. You know, so much of it boils down to insecurities and um, just hesitations that all circle around their past failures, their past letdowns. And so much of that relationship, I feel like helps us to empower them and see what they're capable of and see that um, their past failures and successes don't have to dictate their future. 
And um, yeah, we can't do all of that without relationships. And for me, that's a huge part of what it has always been about is helping people to become more empowered and see that they're so much more capable of doing great things than they ever envisioned. So um, that is pretty much everything that I had to share with you guys on um, this fantastic content from John Maxwell. So I'm going to open it up to some questions, do about like five, 10 minutes of questions, depending on what you'll have. So feel free to unmute yourself and ask or even discuss something um, in more detail or whatever. No one talks, I'll just call y'all out because I'm just like that. Jose, I'm going to call you out real quick. Me? <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm over here typing up all these notes that you're like preaching here to the choir. Well, I mean, I'm preaching to the preacher because you know this real well. So, I don't know what you want me to talk about. Sorry, I'm eating. But, um, oh, you're fine. What I really, really, really would drill on and focus on is creating your team is your family. Your team is your community. Your team is the bread and butter of your business. Sure, we have customers and hostesses and all that stuff, but you know what? Having a connection with your team, knowing why they're doing Sensi, what motivates them? What, you know, what kind of love language do they have? Do they like incentives where they can get business supplies or do they just like being shouted out on Facebook? Do they like um, getting a gift card in the mail? Like really, really knowing your team and it doesn't have to be everyone because, you know, all of us at one point are going to have like 700 people on our team, holla. But, you know, just creating that environment and getting to know your team really, really does make the difference because an example today, I just followed up with, two of my front line and they were telling me that they took November off to kind of relax and, and just have time with family. Like one of them had a brother who came over from being stationed and she's like, I took um, January to kind of hang with him, blah, blah, blah. But don't worry. I'm still part of the team. I'm still here. I said, you know what, do whatever you got to do. This is the beauty of our business. If you want to take a month to enjoy your family because you haven't seen them in who knows how long, that's fine. I had another one. She reached out to me. She's like, Jose, you know, I would never leave you. I love our team. I love, you know, Sensi, but I really think that I need some time to kind of analyze my business because I'm starting to compare myself to others and getting discouraged. So I really want some time to relax and just rethink my business. And I said, go for it. I mean, it's all you, but you know what? Had I not built those relationships with those team members, they probably would have left. They probably just would have been like, you know what? My family's more important. I'm leaving. I don't feel like doing Sensi. I'm going to leave. Oh, you know? yeah. She probably never would have told you that. She never would have revealed that to you had you not had that relationship because she wouldn't have felt comfortable enough to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the other one wouldn't have told me that she's starting to compare herself to others and feeling discouraged. She would have just left. Been like, you know what? I've been with Sensi, you know, how long? And I haven't had a promotion and I can't keep a team of blah, blah, blah. She wouldn't have told me. She would have been like, you know what? I'm done. This sucks. I'm leaving. Um, so I really like that you said that because it's true. And and some team members I have a closer bond with than others. And that's totally fine. Like some team members, we just kind of, we're on the same wavelength, which is cool. Everyone else, you know, if we're not on the same wavelength, I kind of know their family. I know why they do Sensi. I know what motivates them. And that's enough for them to stick around. So as you're building your team, if it's one, if it's two, if it's three, start with a group chat. Do a little group chat and add everyone to it and have everyone answer questions and get to know each other. And if you see something funny, share it on there so you can all laugh. I mean, as long as it's appropriate, don't be sharing, you know, inappropriate stuff that they might not laugh at, you know, I'm just saying. Because um, there's some creepy stuff on Facebook. But, you know, just build that friendship and that connection with people and they're going to they're gonna stay. They might need some time for themselves. They might need some time for whatever. They might even tell you their goals. Be like, Jose, I lost my job. I really need to head director this year because I need the extra $1,300 that the average director makes. You never know. 
So those are my um, two cents on the subject that Katie um, put me on the spot to talk about. I love it. Well, I called you on the spot for a reason because you've done a fantastic job um, of building and creating relationships and connections within your team. And something that um, Lisa Hendrickson said when she was with us is she said results and relationships equal retention. And Mm -hmm. that is what Jose just said, right? Like Jose just explained how two people he thinks he probably would have lost had he not had that relationship with them. And obviously he's helped them get results, right? Because they're not wanting to go either. And one of them is comparing her business. So obviously she's getting, getting results and just stuck in that comparison situation that we all get stuck in sometimes. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Jose. I appreciate it. Anyone else have anything that they want to like ask about or share? Um, this is your opportunity and your time for sure. So feel free. It's open. There is no stupid question or anything. Please feel free. I have a question and I'll be um, super vulnerable in front of all of you because a lot of us have, you know, a main job during the day and I do as well. And sometimes I find it really difficult um, to, to um, just connect all the time with my team um, just because I am so busy at my normal daytime career. So sometimes it's hard for me to try and, you know, harvest those relationships with my team all the time. Now, if I, you know, worked Sensi as my main job, it would be a whole different story, but I don't have that pleasure of doing that yet. Um, so how do you, how do you find the time without losing time and other things, um, to really, um, establish those strong relationships in your team? Well, Chelsea, and I think for you in particular, I'm going to like address it straight to you because you do such a great job of building your VAP group. Building a relationship with your team is as easy as like 10 minutes of saying, hey, how are you? What's going on? What's crack a and, and that's it. Like if you have 10 minutes before you have to clock in, send your team member a message and just ask her, hey, how are you doing? I saw a picture of you and your cat or whatever. And just kind of create that bond so that every time you talk to them, it's not just sensey. Like sometimes you can just ask them about their cat or their kid or whatever you saw on Facebook. Like one of my team members just had a baby. So I posted it on the team page. I said, look how cute she looks with her baby. You know, it's about just authentically caring about people. If you have 30 minutes, post on your team page. Be like, I have 30 minutes. Who wants to chat? And just chat with whoever for 30 minutes. You know, whoever signs up first. I know I've done that with Katie a few times. But um, it's just about like authentically caring. And just if you have 15 minutes for lunch and you're like eating a salad, message your, you know, your um Frontline's team member and be like, hey, Karen, I see that you have 200 PRV this month. Congrats on being active. You know, why did you join Sensi? And just get a sense of who they are and what motivates them. And I mean, it doesn't have to be like a seven hour every day, all day sort of thing, but just yeah, little little bits of knowledge here and there. And yeah. I'm, I'm more like of a schedule person. So for me, I have to like schedule it out. So like what I'll do is I'll be like, so... I have my weeks. Jen uh, Jen Audette actually shared her calendar with us one time. I don't remember. Leadership, I think. And she actually divides her month up. Like the first week is uh, team certifieds, team leads, team stars, team superstars. And she will take, during the course of that week, she makes sure that she tries to connect with Um, people in her team that are at that title. So she does kind of like one title a week and kind of like divvies it up through the week, which works for my brain because like I've got to have it scheduled out. Otherwise, I won't do it. So that's kind of what I try to maintain. And um, I just try to make sure that I touch touch everybody that I can um, in those titles. Obviously, as your team gets bigger and bigger, it's something that you might have to limit down to your front line and only do that stuff with your front line. Um, you know, you'll find what works for you, but like Jose said, it doesn't have to be, um, a long period of time. And even if it's like, I've done this before where I run my report, 
like halfway through the month and I look to see um, who's active in each of those titles in my team. And I will send a voice memo to one of them and I won't say like their name, but I'll say, you know, Hey, I saw you're active. I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. Um, you know, what did you do to get that? And it just gets them opening up and talking to you because everybody loves to share their successes. Right. So, and then I will hold it and forward it to everybody I want to forward it to on Facebook Messenger. I don't know if you know that, but you can actually yeah. forward a voice message. So I love utilizing that tool too. It helps save a lot of time, but it's also super personal because they're getting my voice memo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying so hard and it, it's hard when you, you know, a lot of us are juggling so many things during the day and Mm -hmm. It's not as glamorous um, as a lot of people think. Sometimes when you get to a director status, there's a lot of responsibility. And sometimes, you know, a lot of us new directors struggle um, to kind of find that balance. And, you know, it's ebbs and flows for me. Some days I'm like, yeah, I'm killing this. You know, I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. And then other days I'm like, I'm failing miserably. What the heck am I doing? <laughs> but even at a year end, you know, we have those moments of weakness for sure. Um, Absolutely. And Eight and years in, I still feel that way all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like after I came back from leadership, I'm like, I suck at life. <laughs> you know, I think we all, and you know, I think that's such a, I think it's an important part of success because if we don't have an internal drive to always be better and we think we're just doing great as we are and we can improve. That's probably, that's when we're going to start to see our business go. Pfft. So right. it's actually good that we kind of beat ourselves up like that. But, um, I think you're doing a wonderful job and I oh, think thanks. I, I mean it. And if you just, um, if you're like me and you kind of need like a system, maybe try doing that and dividing titles up through the week or through the month and see if that helps you kind of feel like you're connecting with people more. Um, you know, just find whatever way you want to make those titles a priority that week or whatever. Awesome. I like that idea too. So I, I, I can definitely like structure that out. So and then if you that. have a whole week to touch your, you know, star consultants, like you're not going to feel overwhelmed. Say you've got six star consultants in your team or whatever, you know, obviously some of the weeks are going to be more overwhelming than others. So you could even like merge like star and superstar consultants are week four and, you know, yeah. divide certifieds up among the first two weeks. Cause there's more that week or whatever, you know, it'll work for you. Yeah. And I'm just going to create more time. Like Jose said, to just use those, you know, 15 minutes or 10 minutes I can, um, to do that. So bye Jose. Bye Jose. So we got a great question from Julie. She said, and we'll close it out with this one because I don't want to make y'all stay on the computer all night. I know you've got things to do, families. Um, so Julie said, um, what do you do if you're the team leader and you're getting burned out? What do you do to pull yourself back in? Okay, Julie, we all get burned out. Please do not think that you're alone. I was so burned out before I went to leadership. So burned out before I went to leadership um, this January, you know, just a, a couple weeks ago. I find that there's a quote out there that says, um, motivation doesn't last. Neither does bathing. That's why we encourage it daily. I don't know if you've ever heard that quote. Um, but it's so true. We all get burnt out and especially after busy season, it's very, very normal. So it's important that we find a source to get filled. Right. So when I'm burned out, I know that I haven't gotten my needs filled in a while. And then I went to leadership and that filled my needs. I really have found that as a leader, Sensi has really scheduled out the year very, very well to meet our needs at those times when we do feel burned out. So as you continue to grow your business and get to a place where um, you can go to leadership and then can go to reunion and um, you know, you're in the trips, like you find that you're getting fueled really consistently throughout the year. They've really planned it out very, very well. So I will say that, but 
until you are doing those things, I think one thing that's very, very important is that you are pursuing um, other things that are going to fill your tank, whether it's um, girl time or whether it's reading an inspirational book or even um, watching inspirational videos. Like you've got to fill your tank. If your tank is not full, you are not going to be able to pour into other people. So you've got to find some things that really speak to your soul and, and help you refuel. And if you're going to uh, world tour, which is just, just coming up here really, really soon, I know that that's going to fill you back up. So I hope that you're coming to world tour and I'm sure that you're going to feel a major recharge after that. I know that. Yeah, that's, has that's a, that's the main reason why I decided to, to go to world tour this year. I can't afford it at all, but I somehow scraped the money up and I'm going to get there on gas fumes if I have to. <laughs> Which location are you going to? Springs. Wonderful. Colorado Springs. I'm so, yep. I'm so glad that you're going. It's going to be, it's going to be worth your sacrifice. If you come home from a world tour and you implement those things that you are going to learn, I know your business is going to grow this year. Yeah. Julie, and you get me. I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> We've got some really exciting things planned for you guys. You're going to have an awesome time. Chelsea and Shelby are the best. Yeah, definitely excited. My mother in law is flying down from Jersey to come too. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So. Well, thank you for the question. I really appreciate it. I think that was an important question to be asked. So I'm really glad that you did it. And I will say like one of the people that I always find super inspiring is Alison Dockey. I don't know if you ever watch any of her videos, but she always inspires. Mm -hmm. She's definitely one that I would, would have as a go-to and subscribe to her on YouTube or, you know, follow her online steps to success. I just think she's crazy inspiring. Yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. She really is. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope that you found tonight's content helpful for you as you are um, developing your um, leadership abilities. And if you're looking for like real tangible things um, like to do as a Sensi leader on our YouTube channel, I've got some videos. I'll just um, name a couple of them off really, really quick. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I'll post the links on our team page. I'll do that. That'll be easier. Um, so I'll post a couple links on our team page of some videos. Um, just, I've got a couple videos, one on how to run different reports and stuff in the workstation to help you, um, as a leader, um, save you some time and stuff like that. And then another one on like recognition. So I've got a couple different videos that I'll share, um, that can kind of help you along this journey, um, through your, your leadership journey. So I hope you guys know how much I care about you and want every single one of you to um, really use your Sensi business as a vessel to create the life that you and your family desire. So um, if I can help you guys in any way, please let me know um, or let your up and line know because we're here for you. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see some of you at World Tour. Thank you, Katie. Absolutely. Thank y'all for joining.